We've spent the last 12 hours hunkered down in the geodesic dome trying to ride out the hurricane, but honestly at this point it is just not safe. A tree just cracked off and almost hit us. The animals are terrified. Like I'm terrified. Like it's definitely time to go. So our plan for today was to really do a whole lot of nothing. We actually just got back from the river. We decided to take the boys for a drive in the RTV and just our luck, we blew out the back tire. <laughs> really bad. Like, like, look at that. <laughs> we've been deferring doing the maintenance. We bought this used. We should have done some stuff to it right away when we got it. Yeah. These are the original tires out of the factory, so. Yeah, I mean, they're 12 years old. By the way, all of you left so many suggestions in the video on what to name the RTV, and we're going with Ruby. I she, just love it. She looks like a Ruby to me. Like, she does. look at her. Short, little stout, you know? <laughs> She's a go getter. She doesn't mind some hard work. Solid, reliable. A little quirky, and she gets cranky when she works too much. <laughs> her ass end goes out on her sometimes. She's got that one bad knee. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we are going to get everything set up and figure out how to do this maintenance. <laughs> Let's do it. Nice not to get squished while you're doing the oil. Doesn't that look like it? And there's another filter right there too. HST filter. I think we should jack it up so I can get under. Like you're not going underneath it, underneath it, are you? I don't know, I don't know where the drain is. I found the oil filter, it's in the middle. All the way back there. So we actually decided that before we take off the tires, we're gonna change the fuel filter, the oil filter, all of that kind of stuff. So Todd is just jumping underneath and draining the oil into this new oil pan we got. We're all fancy now. Super fancy, we're gonna be our own little Kubota repair shop. <laughs> now we just let it drain. How long does that take? I don't know. I'm kind of excited. This is making me feel really good. Like, yeah. I mean, being all the way out here and having this equipment, we kind of have to look after it ourselves and yeah, it's not get realistic. comfy with it. Not realistic to be bringing it in. Yeah, every single time. So anyway, I am going to move on to step two in the book. <laughs> Ooh, messy. Yeah, they always are. They're full. Of, that's where like all the dirt and stuff is sitting. Oh, true, I guess. The filter. The filter. <laughs> <laughs> Just another mistake. Now we gotta find where the oil goes. <laughs> oil, right there. Way different than what came out of it. This is exciting, what a savings. Oh, huge savings. Love wasn't, it. Wasn't really that bad either to do. No. We were wasting time. It's not screaming at us, so that's good. <laughs> okay, so now that we have the oil changed, it's time to do this air filter here. Part of the complexity is where this is an older model. A lot of the videos we're seeing online are newer models. Yeah. So things are moved around a little bit. It's making it a little confusing, but we're luckily- We're figuring out as we go. Exactly. This doesn't seem like terribly dirty. Maybe. I think it's still good to replace it though. Yeah, like who knows when the last one was. I doubt it was ever. Well, look at the difference. Oh yeah, true. <laughs> it just doesn't look good. I guess that's because it's doing its job. And we're just used to things being dirty, so. <laughs> Nice. Oh, he's some handsome. Fuse. Oh. oh, hi, little buddy. Hi, little buddy. Are you proud of your gay dad? Well, I mean, it's taking you six hours. I would have had this done in two. This is kind of exciting for me. I've never changed a tire before. I've never had a flat tire. It's just never been my luck. Yeah. So this is kind of cool. Wow. We did it. Look at us go, Mr. Mechanic Man. Now, I wouldn't say we're quite at NASCAR level, but we've got all four tires off. <laughs> we're definitely getting there. I mean, the driver might be a little mad because we'd be like, the race would be over by the time we got the tires off. I mean, we still got to figure out how to put them back on, but. We did our best. Exactly, you can't be mad. <laughs> um, by the way, Look at how cracked and dry these tires are. It's a wonder that all four of them didn't go. Well, look at the sides. Yeah. Like it's, like, <laughs> they're completely deteriorated. Yeah. So anyway, we're gonna load them into the car, take them into town, and there's a company that's gonna mount and balance the new tires onto the rims for us. Yeah, because obviously we don't have the equipment to be able to change the tires on the rims and yet. stuff, so. Yet. <laughs> okay, we're gonna get these replaced and keep going. You're just another 
So he just dropped the tires off to the shop and they said it'd be about an hour for them to change the rims and balance and do all the fancy things that they need to do so we can actually install them back on. But Todd came up with a really good idea while we wait, haircuts. He's actually in getting his right now. Todd's Mop Top Chop Shop is very much still in business. A gay man never feels more powerful than the three days after a haircut. However, it is so not a substitute for somebody who actually knows what they're doing. I think we need to take off a lot. <laughs> there are so many other ways that we can be saving money, like doing our tires. It just feels great to kind of be pampered a little bit and have a nice clean cut. But that's not the only reason I'm feeling great right now. I've been having my AG1 while I wait for Todd to get back, the sponsor of today's video. AG1 is the ultimate all-in-one nutritional formula, jam-packed with 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients. We have had AG1 every single day, sometimes twice a day, for almost three years, and let me tell you, it has made such an impact in our daily energy levels, our sleep, overall happiness, everything from A to Z. The thing that we like the most about it is it's one-stop shopping. It takes the place of so many other expensive vitamins that we would normally have individually. So when you add it all up, AG1 is actually a more economical way to get your daily vitamins. And on top of all of that, it tastes great. It has a subtly sweet flavor, almost like bubble gum. I mean, obviously, if we've had it every day for this long, we must really like it. And I'm sure you will too. Make sure you click the link in the description box down below. By doing so, you'll get five free travel packs as well as a one-year supply of the vitamin D drops. Definitely check it out. But for now, I'm gonna hang out with these buddies. Hey! Oh, <laughs> look what they're... You looking at Tim Hortons? Maybe we'll get a little treat for you, hey? Do you want anything? No, I'm still working on my greens. I think okay. so. I'll get four um, plain Timbits. Thank awesome, you. thanks. Here, Charlie. This is Charlie's, you had yours. You had yours. Eddie, you're being a greedy gobble gannet. Eddie? Good but <laughs> buddy. You'll save two for when we get home. All right, let's go get our tires, buddy. So we just picked up the four new tires and these are so much better quality than what we had before. Just look at the tread of these compared to the old tires. We're not gonna get stuck in the mud and the snow. It's gonna be perfect for plowing. Plus they just look really nice. Yeah. Look at this. It's definitely a good idea to get higher quality tires, I think. Yeah, Ruby deserves the best high heels. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're gonna throw these tires on. Shouldn't be hard, I think the main work is over now, so we're just gonna get these locked in. <laughs> They're so nice. NASCAR's finest. Oh, they haven't popped, that's a good sign. <laughs> We have been ripping around on Ruby and... Having the best time. Oh my God, these new tires are amazing. Yeah. First off, they're gonna be really helpful this winter because I don't think there's any snow that we're gonna be like... Oh no. Not like, able to get through. It's it's crazy. Like it's night and day how big of a difference it is. I wish we had have done it as soon as we got it. But. I know. It does rip things up a little bit, which I think is okay for the driveway because that'll stop like weeds and stuff from growing. I'll just yeah. have to like rip around in this to do some We're reading. calling going for a rip. <laughs> <laughs> we're country bumpkins now. <laughs> um, also, I was just chatting with a bunch of you in the comments. Apparently, we're supposed to be getting hit with a massive hurricane, so shout out to all of you for looking out for us. When? The day after tomorrow. So we still have, like, time, but, like, I feel we should be a little bit more responsible. Like, two days, we should be more on top of the weather. But, oh. I mean, they changed their mind. It may not even hit us. I mean, I guess it is hurricane season. I never really thought about that. I've just been kind of, like, head in the sand. Yeah. Um, should we go deal with it? Yeah, I think we should maybe, like, figure out, like... We have a lot of half-finished projects. Like, we should be adults now. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, right. you wanna go back and do that? Sure, let's go. So we've been home for a few hours working on our hurricane preparedness list, and I don't know if it's the fact that I'm type A and Todd's type B, but um, list... You have that backwards. What? You're type B. You oh, yeah. Far from oh, yeah. my love. I am, yeah, type B, president of the club. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, though, lists just overwhelm me. Um, I just feel like, yeah, it just, they don't work for me How? at all. It helps us stay focused. So now we know what we need to do. We need to remove the dangerous trees by the solar panels. We need to get groceries. We need to get gas. We need to move the pot. We need to pick up the RV. We need to set up the RV. We need to pack and clean up the yard furniture. We need to secure the firewood. Then we also need to secure the sauna door. Easy peasy. <laughs> Honestly, all I'm thinking about right now is Charlie. We haven't shared this with you just because I find 
things with the dogs, like their health, it's really difficult to talk about. Um, and whenever I do, I just get really emotional. So I'm going to try my best. But we found a tumor on Charlie and it's really large. And he has surgery tomorrow to get it removed. And obviously, like, my mind just goes to, like, the worst places. And But he's and in good hands with Dr. Mrs. Nice Lady. So mm -hmm. anyway, I think hey, maybe... Buddy. We should just spend the night snuggling with him if you want to, and then yeah. while he's in for surgery tomorrow, we can do all this. Yeah. Right? He's already ready for snuggles. <laughs> you ready for your snuggles? You ready, buddy? Good, buddy. We'll see you soon. You have a good snooze. <laughs> Bye, buddy. <laughs> Be a good boy. We'll see you later, okay, bud? Bye, sweetie. <laughs> Bye, buddy. You gotta go. Come on, buddy. You gotta go. You guys have a good day, man. You too. That's the right decision. One of them in a period of two months has gone from this size to about this size. So it is important we take it out because it's in his armpit and he's really having some trouble running and walking at times. So it's yeah. the right decision. Definitely not an easy, like, just an un uneasy feeling. Yeah, yeah, and then like I'm also worried like because like how much does he understand what we've been telling him and is he going to be mad at us when he gets home like for being sore? <laughs> All right, we'll cross that bridge later today. We have so much to do. I got a car. Never know how long that storm's gonna last. Tinkle? Go pee. Go pee. They all appear to be fatty benign lumps, so the doctor does not feel like we need to send them away. Nice. Okay, that's great to hear. Perfect. Alrighty, so I'll put you in the books there for 5 o'clock, and we'll see you in a few hours, okay? Oh, okay, perfect. Thank you again. You're very welcome. Take okay. care. Bye. We told you he'd be fine. Mm, we told you he was going to be okay. We're going to continue on with preparing for the storm, and yeah, but it's good news. Bye. Hey. Gotta figure out that internet cable. <laughs> so janky. Anytime someone comes in for a delivery or anything. Gotta pull to it up. Pull it up. <laughs> <laughs> Look at it now. <laughs> yeah, it, that's the downside. It gets a little droopier each time, but. All right, let's keep crossing things off the to-do list. <laughs> I hate lifting this thing. I hate it. It's so awful. <laughs> How about um, I go get the RV and you work on tree removal? Sure. That sound like a good plan? Yeah. We both don't need to go. It's kind of uh, okay. not going to use the time. Earlier in the summer, we noticed that there were some trees that were posing a serious risk to our solar panels. So if you remember, we had a crew come in and take out the really big ones that we just weren't comfortable cutting down ourselves. Well, we've been kicking the can down the road about dealing with this maple as well as two spruce over there that are dead. There are no leaves or needles on them, so they are not coming back. Luckily, they're small enough that I think I can take them out safely. So we're gonna do a controlled fall of them now rather than letting the wind do what it wants with them and potentially taking out our solar panels. So anyway, I'm gonna get these down now before Tyler gets back with the RV. Cut it out, I can take you going now. This is a perfect example of being safe instead of sorry. This tree is actually much bigger than I thought it was now that it's on the ground. So it really did pose a huge risk of hitting the solar panels if we didn't do a controlled fall. I notched it out, cut it the way that I wanted. Now I'm just gonna quickly chunk it up, get it out of the way because Tyler's gonna be back very quickly and we need to have this driveway clear to get the RV into its spot. And just like that, we've got a small little pile of firewood. So it's a little rotted. You can see that 
the tree was actually really dead and starting to decay. So it's not good to use inside in our wood stove, but it's perfect for campfires or using in the sauna or the hot tub. So I'm just gonna stack it here and probably split it next spring. So these are the other two trees that I'm gonna take out. You can see that they're really not in the healthiest of shape. So if a strong wind was to blow them, they're gonna go right into the panels and they're a little bit more exposed because this area is now just so open. So definitely worth taking them down. That's perfect timing. I was just taking a little break from cutting the first couple of trees and I heard the truck coming down the road and here's Tyler. But I don't know how he's gonna back it in if he's driving in the driveway. Shouldn't we back in? Oh, well, I guess he's got a different plan. I've got a plan. What is it? I'm I would have backed in. I'm gonna go there and then back in. All right, let's see if it works. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to get through this. You're cutting the wrong way. 99% of marriages end because of backing up a trailer. My friends is what we call a jackknife. Okay, I'm taking over. I just, you need a break. It is so crazy how fast you lose a skill when you're not using it. We lived in an RV for like a year and traveled all across North America and we can't even back up into our own driveway right now. We swapped out. It's just, it's so frustrating. Like, it just jackknifes and yeah, it's not the vibe. Good job, hon. Sometimes you just need. You're good, just straight back. That was a show. <laughs> a little rusty, but that's okay. So now we have one last tree to take out, and this is one that I'm really nervous for. I think we uh, should add a disclaimer on this by the way. What? Do not do this at home. This is a terrible, <laughs> terrible idea. We are not professional tree removers. We thought it was a pretty tree when we started building the land and thought it was cool being in the garden. Well, as things developed around it, we realized the risk that it poses. If it falls north, it takes out our fence and our arbor. If it falls west, it takes out our solar panels. And if it falls south, it's going to take out our planters. So we're going to bring it down across the pond because that's the only way that we have to do it without damaging something. So fingers crossed we can do it. With a jerry-rigged tension rod system that I Yeah, just... it's gonna be interesting. Plus, if you can see across the pond, it is right, like it's gonna be scraping the tomato plants. So, wish us luck. So you're gonna notch it right here? Mm -hmm. actually worked out, which kind of surprised me, to be honest. We were preparing for the worst, but it landed directly in the pond. Todd's got it chunked up decently, so now we just gotta figure out a way to drag it out of here. I don't think it's gonna be too bad. No. But I brought this on in case we need to cut a little more. And worst case scenario, you go grab a Speedo and get in the pond and push it out. <laughs> yeah, one sec, be right back. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think, just drag it? Yeah, I think you grab on and pull like hell. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now that that's out of the way, the next thing we need to do is clean up this entire area. So all of our chairs and umbrella, fire pit. It's all gotta go. <laughs> Blanket bin, can't oh, leave yeah. that out. No. Yeah, so we don't want this to be left out, obviously, because like the wind could pick it up, throw it into the panels or into the pond, like or the tree. Break it or yeah. who knows. So anyway, we're gonna move it all into the tool shed for the storm and then bring it back out because I'm determined to still have a few more fire nights. I think we could put away for the season. No, but... <laughs> if we're putting it away for a season, we're digging out a Christmas tree, so. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't put it past Todd. All right, let's put this away. Got it? Yeah. Ha, 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 ha.
<laughs> Wine fork. <laughs> we have some fun out by the fire pit. <laughs> I think we should secure the firewood, cover that, so as best we can. And crack a bottle of wine? No, gotta get Charlie. Gotta get Charlie. <laughs> and then crack a bottle of wine. If you caught the video from a few months ago, we had five cord of wood here. We stacked it, got everything good to go. This is a very DIY system, so. Oh, I don't believe you at all. <laughs> <laughs> we just don't have time to build like a complete wood storage area this year. And this firewood is so important to keeping the house that we're building warm this winter. As you can see, this is what happens. The wind blows the tarp off. So we have a tarp on the bottom that's preventing all the ground moisture from coming up. We've got, I think, 20 pallets all stacked so the wood can go on top and then this on top. However, we need to put another tarp to prevent it from blowing and then we're gonna strap it. So anyway, we're gonna quickly get this covered up so that we do not lose the dryness that we've accomplished this summer. We've been home for a few hours and have just been consoling Charlie. He's not feeling the best. He's in a lot of pain, which they said would happen for the next few weeks, so. Yeah, and they said because of the size of the um, cavity that we need to expect a lot of swelling and issues with walking, so. It is what it is. They did find, he went in to have two lumps removed and they found a second one when they were in there, so luckily they took that out before it became an issue. Yeah, I just feel really bad for him. Like, he's just, he's so sweet, but. Well, He's been a trooper through it all. Yeah. He's definitely had his, his trials. Hey. Yeah. It's been quite a day for it, though. Like, we, we're just really exhausted. Like, it's been a lot, and we'd be lying if we said we weren't stressed. Um, yeah, like, I hope everything goes well with it, but they're saying that it's, like, the worst storm that Canada's ever had. Potentially. Right? Potentially, we don't know yeah. for certain. Potentially. No one It's knows. not. <laughs> so, anyway... That's what's going on. You ready for bed, big guy? We'll see you in the morning. We spent the last 12 hours hunkered down in the geodesic dome trying to ride out the hurricane. But honestly, at this point, it is just not safe. A tree just cracked off and almost hit us. The animals are terrified. Like I'm terrified. Like it's definitely time to go. Yeah, it's not worth it. We have nothing to prove by staying here no. and I think it's the safe decision. Yeah. Um, we tried to bring the truck down and a tree's cracked. It's gotta go. I yeah. got our bags packed so I'm gonna go grab the animals. Okay, we'll see you Sunday.